I am attempting to make my very first filterless bioactive paludarium. I'm really happy right now because we've just found some tadpoles. I wanted to witness these tadpoles growing up, so I brought some home. In my belly. Wait, what? While I saved up some money to buy a proper tank for the paludarium, the tadpoles stayed in this temporary setup where I fed them algae. There they lived among plants and water from their natural habitat, which was also teeming with life of various kinds, some prettier than others. It's been a few weeks since I brought back the mountain tadpoles and everything in the temporary setup has grown quite a lot, especially this little guy. He's got all four of his legs, while the others just have their hind legs, and small ones at that. I think he was a different type of tadpole because he was particularly small and speckled gray instead of black like the others. He's a feisty one for sure, and almost big enough to crawl out of this tub. Fortunately, we finally got ourselves a proper tank. Unfortunately, there's been a tragedy. While I was emptying the tub, I realized that all of the tadpoles were gone. And that morning, I recalled seeing a yellow bird near the tub, and I think it ate all of the tadpoles. All except one, that is. That's right, the little gray one ended up being the lone survivor. I temporarily moved him into the tank where he couldn't get eaten by birds, while I made this custom table from scraps for the paludarium to rest on. It'll go right here under this shelf. As you can see, our little survivor has lost his tail and become a true frog. I've been feeding him hand-caught fruit flies and anything else small enough for him to eat. I was getting really excited to make a proper paludarium, but then I realized the tank had a leak. And I don't mean the vegetable. It seemed like it was just one setback after the other. But if there's anything I've learned while making these videos, it's follow through and determination. So despite the many setbacks, I pushed on. A bit of silicone did the trick, and once I was certain it wasn't going to leak again, it was finally time to build our paludarium. I started with a thin layer of pebbles, then built up one corner with dirt, upon which I put a patch of moss which had been with the frog since his tadpole days in the mountains. From there I went on to add a piece of wood and this burl art that I had made in a previous video. Then for the rocks. Seems to be getting kinda chubby. I put in some mint plants so the whole thing would smell like freshly brushed teeth. I put this moss here as sort of a front yard for the frog, in case he fancied a game of croquet or bocce ball. Then I added these cool sticks which I think look like miniature trees, sort of adds a sense of scale to the whole paludarium. I swapped and added a few more stones before putting some water in so the plants wouldn't dry out. As I'm sure you can tell, my process was a bit all over the place. I didn't have an exact plan of how I wanted it to be, I just sort of eyeballed it. Which I think turned out okay. I decided it would be a cool idea to add a little staircase for the frog so he can get in and out of the water easily. The nice thing about a paludarium like this is that the plants filter the water. They soak up the nutrients left by the frogs and other living creatures, which is their food. And the little critters like the snails and other water bugs eat what's left over. I also put in a few isopods to help clean up anything on the land sections, which the frog was a little too excited about. Enjoy this montage of the completed paludarium and a truly inspiring display of frog determination.
catching that isopod, even if it meant conquering his fear of heights. This little frog is no quitter. Alas, I think it's safe to say the frog likes his new home.